Welcome back to the channel guys. This week we're going to have a quick video for Tetris Attack. But before we delve deep into this poster, click those like and subscribe buttons that help spread the word on poster collecting and encourages more rare treasures to come to light. This channel's focus is on retail and arcade posters, sometimes promo posters. The posters I feature are genuine, not reproductions or reprints, although I will give shoutouts on occasion for reprints done right. I focus 99% on genuine posters. Original posters appreciate in value, even in the worst condition. If you do buy reprints, try to avoid reprints that don't include a distinguishing mark or a maker's mark. Such counterfeits are a hazard for all collectors. And let's dig in. Tetris Attack is a real charmer of a puzzle game. It features accessible gameplay, suitable for all ages. It's gender agnostic and fun, whether you're playing single or two-player. The game released in North America and PAL regions as a reskin version of Japan's Panel Day Pond. The original featured cute fairies and magicians, while this version produced by Google Junpei Yokoi and Nintendo's R&D One featured all Nintendo mascots. Junpei Yokoi was the original inventor of Nintendo's famous cross pad, also known as a D-pad. Its use in video game controllers revolutionized player movement. He also created Nintendo's Game & Watch series of portables, the original Nintendo Game Boy hardware, and his R&D One group produced numerous hit software titles such as the beloved Metroid and Dr. Mario. 1996's Tetris Attack, however, would be his last official game at Nintendo following the ill-fated launch of Nintendo's Virtual Boy, but a high note in his software ludography. Tetris Attack first released in Western territories and later in Japan as an exclusive for Nintendo's Saddle of You, and later on physical cartridge for Game Boy. North America and PAL regions, however, are the only territories to get an official cartridge for the Super Nintendo. So this poster is a North America large format retail poster, similar to an American movie poster or a Japanese B1, although I would say that it's taller and wider than a Japanese B1. Now I'm going to magically add a CD image for comparison. I use this CD image for B1 sized posters, but it's not entirely accurate because this poster is bigger, so you'll have to imagine this poster as being just a bit bigger than what I can represent here. Unique to Nintendo's advertising goods of this era is a UPC barcode, and this time that UPC barcode is placed next to the Game Boy logo. I wish I knew more about how they were distributed, but I imagine they were sold directly to shopkeepers. Nearly all store promos of this era have a very similar product barcode for Nintendo advertising. The condition of this specimen is near flawless. There's no staining, no tears, no pinholes, no fading. It's in excellent condition, poster fans. Now, let's talk poster, and let's take a minute to appreciate the accuracy captured by the artist of this beautiful poster. I'm seeing four unique elements of Panel Day Pond's gameplay. Blocks cascading to the top of this poster indicate a crucial moment for the player, possibly approaching a game over screen. Garbage blocks with those nasty faces are dropping from above. I also see a shock block with an exclamation symbol and a marvelous clearing of those yellow star blocks. We're in it to win it. Don't give up. This poster is showcasing eye-pleasing accuracy and leads me to think the artist also enjoyed playing this game.
This signage is informative. We're being told this is a two-player game, almost dead center in the middle of this poster. Perfect for competitive siblings around the holidays and the hardware platforms it's available on. A lesser retail poster would withhold such precious details from the consumer. At the top, there's a sales enticing pitch that reads, When was the last time you had yourself a Tetris attack? Question mark. Sounds a lot more fun than having a heart attack. On the downside, I wish there was a little more variety in those garbage block faces. But what we see here is thrilling and playful. This poster isn't going to intimidate any new players at retail. And it makes me want to speak with my sales associate and gather more information. The hearts, diamonds, and other common gaming objects also widen its advertising appeal. I can imagine Granny thinking the game has something to do with her card games. So it has multi-generation appeal. With poster art this good, you don't really need screenshots. But I'd like to have had a release date, price points, and images of a Super Nintendo and of a Game Boy. Still, I find it a superb poster for Yokoi's last hurrah at Nintendo. We'll see you soon at Bandai Gunpei. Well, my friends, we've reached that point again where we must say goodbye to this poster for now. Worry not, I have more fresh and exciting posters to share with you. Tetris Attack capitalized on the name Tetris, but in actuality, its gameplay had very little to do with it. When I first discovered this game in 1996, I thought of it as an evolution of Tetris. I thought at the time, finally, someone has produced a worthy sequel to the marvelous Tetris. Little did I know, this was the brilliant panel de pawn in Nintendo's clothing. Today, Panel Day Pawn is given its due with so many Pokemon spin-offs. The core gameplay remains positively Panel Day Pawn, and we get to experience it on many more devices. Thanks for watching my video today. Please put a tip in the tip jar by hitting those like and subscribe buttons before you leave. I'll be back soon with a return trip to the arcades and some sharpshooting action from Namco. See you then.